Howdy again, it's Tubal Kane, and this is a temporary video, and it's really just a follow-up to tips 399 and number 400, in which I uh, not only purchased and acquired this uh, Delta variable speed drill press, but also talked about making this new handle that was in 400 to replace the original one-handled type of affair, which I don't particularly like. So be sure and watch that if you're interested. I use the dividing head in that, so that might be of interest to a few of you. But just a few other things that I want to do on this, and namely this needle. And I've found some chain, and I'm ready to install that, and then put the cover back on. And a few other corrections, maybe, in what I had said to people. that People always catch me when I make an error. So, <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what I bought on eBay. I was told by many that I got a good buy on this press at $190, so I'll take their word for it, but I'm not used to paying a lot, nor am I in areas where there's a shortage of machinery, so there's just an abundance of stuff where I live. However, you really don't run into these variable speeds because they cost too much, and I just know that I'm going to love it because the whole idea is that with the step pulleys, I don't care what you say, you're going to find a comfortable, compromised speed and you're going to leave it set there because even though you might change the speed in you know 30 seconds or one minute it's something that's a chore and you tend to avoid now i did replace all the wiring as i told you with with a nice high quality uh, rubber coated wire and including the wiring to the cutler hammer switch someone said that this is not a lever i guess i had said this is a lever it's not a lever he said it's a linear actuator so it's going up and down. As you said, there's no fulcrum. How can it be a lever? Which is true. Someone also said, why can't you change the speeds while the machine is not running? Because it's very clearly marked. But what will happen there, and this happened untold number of times at school with these machines, even though I only had two machines like that, that the kids would change the speed and it will jam the belt enough so that I would have to take the cover off and and just kind of work it and uh, because this belt will become jammed and pinched is what really happens now the purpose of the video again is to install a new chain here between this sprocket in here and then the lower sprocket so that I can uh, have a needle indicator to show what speed the machine is running at. For those of you that are interested in my machine shop courses, I am working on a Logan, how to run a Logan Lays series. That will be out probably after New Year's. So if you're a Logan lover, watch for that. And I had been in contact with Scott Logan, who is the grandson of the founder of the Logan Engineering Company. And now he's in charge of Logan Actuator Company, which really has nothing to do with the original Logan. All right, enough of that. Now, someone also contacted me and said that this handle is, is actually an upgrade, you know, and it's a high-quality handle. And I agree, it really is very well made compared to the cheap ones that you might see on some little rinky-dink uh, drill press. But... Here is the original manual, actually not original, I got it off of vintage machinery, but shown on the cover here is this handle and in the parts list. I've circled it. You can see that that is the handle that was issued with this machine, but I turned it into a, a three uh, handle deal like this, uh, like on my little drill press. Also, one other thing. I'm going to cut now. I know I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. I was just at Grizzly Tools in Springfield, Missouri two days ago, and I noticed that they had 15 drill presses, but none of them were of the variable speed type. They all had step pulleys, which I just don't like it. I'm sorry, maybe you do. And even with this little one here, I have turned it into a variable speed because it's the right kind of motor that can be uh, 
controlled. And, oh man, there goes my tape. But I use this little speed control on this little drill press. So take a look now as I uh, walk through Grizzly with just about one minute worth of video showing you those drill presses. And then I'll get back here to the bench. I'm at Grizzly again. And out of the 15 models, that's right, 15 models of drill presses that they have here on the floor, there's not a one of them that is variable speed. They're all step pulleys. Kind of surprises me until we get down to the high-end model. Even this one for 1500 is step pulleys. And when we finally get to the $4,000 model, then it's variable speed. And that would be electronic, not variable pitch pulley. Hmm. Interesting. I had put a plea out on that last video on where can I get chain like this. I didn't really want to try to get it from Delta. I doubt they would have it. And it looked familiar to me, but I, I just couldn't place it. But I had countless comments of people saying, well, that's ladder chain available in many places. One man even said, I'll send you some. Or he said, I've converted my uh, drill press and I'll send you all of the parts. So, But I had already ordered ladder chain from eBay from this outfit in Wisconsin. So that came while I was down in Branson and I bought a foot of it and I'll cut it off to length and splice it in there and uh, I gotta determine what the length is but since they offered two different sizes I was thinking oh no but they gave a dimension and yes it does fit the sprocket perfectly now I remember where I have seen this and several it almost looks like jewelry because this one is plated it's rather pretty I had seen these on toys when I was a kid, particularly on my friend's Barber Green Loader. And it was also used in erector sets and mechano sets and things like that and clocks. So there were a lot of uses for it. And it's uh, really what they call a positive synchronization chain between two shafts. Because I was going to use a o-ring or, or some little belt which if it was tight enough probably would have served the purpose but this is going to do the job so I will determine what the length is and remember I also told you that there is a misalignment of the two sprockets so one sprocket is approximately 10 degrees off of the other so we got two shafts running like this but this chain is limber enough to make the transition Whereas a piece of roller train, chain, like bicycle chain, wouldn't do the job. So this is pretty slick stuff, and apparently there is still a big demand for it because they're manufacturing it. All right, now I'm going to do the cutting and splicing off camera because that's going to be kind of difficult to show. When I bought the drill press, as you know, I bought several other boxes of stuff, and in the boxes, I, as I went through them, I'm very quick to throw things out, you know, and, uh, too quick in fact. So I found this chain in there and I threw it away quickly in the, my deep garbage can. Well then later when I took the drill press apart, I found the, the small pieces of this still in the press up there by the pulleys. So then I realized, well, I need this. So uh, I had to dig through that filthy, smelly garbage full of ants and flies and corruption and found this because I was going to splice it or even perhaps put a piece of wire in there to connect it because it doesn't need to wrap around completely but there wasn't enough there. This did require tw uh, 11 inches. I bought 12 inches but it required a full 11 inches so I had thought about what several other people suggested. Alright I got it installed let's take a look. Well there it is and when I first installed it it was just a little bit too loose the trek. So I took it back off and removed uh, one link but now it's just tighter than uh, 
G string on a steel guitar, but yet maybe it'll stretch into compliance and believe me, there's no backlash. Take a look. Here it is from the front and it works too good to be true. And I'm down to four, what is it, four fifty. Now let's see if it is calibrated. Well actually it is, I already do a little work on it here, but let me show you how I check the RPM. You might remember this from a few years ago. I think that was 12 or $15, but I put a new battery in it, and of course it doesn't work. I'm getting totally random settings with, uh, uh, readings with it. So it says 615, which is wrong. I don't know if you heard that sound or not, but that was that noise was that other Chinese <laughs> tachometer hitting the garbage can. The bottom of the garbage can. Okay, here's my German one, and I like this, but it only works in one of the ranges, so I'm on the, what is it, 400 to 5,000 range. No, that's not the one I want. I want that range, 40 to 500. was, and it won't hold, but it was right at 450. Watch it again. Uh, a little less. Uh, four, well now it's creeping up to 450. Well, too much for that, but anyway, it did, it did go to 450, and you can see that it doesn't come back down, so that's a very expensive one. It came in a kit, but I think it's junk also. But I, it's too nice to throw away. I like the old Starrett RPM counter. No battery is required. However, you need a watch. So I've got it zeroed out where you see the little two projections there. Those can be used just by feeling them with your thumb. One revolution here is 100 RPM. So I'm just going to do 30 seconds and then double it. I'll speed this up. All right, and that was 30 seconds. It's reading 235, so I got to double that. So. 470 is the true speed, even though it says 450. And I would not have expected the needle on the indicator up there to be totally accurate. I'll do the same thing off camera with the 1000 RPM, so see if it is consistently semi accurate throughout its range. It read about 1100 RPM when I was at 1000 here. So this is just ballpark, but mighty handy anyway, and I'm glad that I got it repaired. Just one other thought, and then I'll bring this video to a close. All I have left to do is put the guard on. I already put some grease on the little rack and pinion and oiled a few choice spots, so it's really done. But my comment now is really on RPM. And several people have noticed that on all of these small drill presses, generally the slow speed is four or five or even 600 RPM. And 600 on the little Walker Turner over here, that is not slow enough for much of the work that a metal worker does. It's just fine for woodworking. But when you get into large hole saws or large drill bits, like even a three quarter inch bit, if you can hold it in your chuck, but you're probably not going to have the power to turn anything greater than that. But we need some slow RPM, uh, uh, slow speeds. Uh, matter of fact, we need a speed of uh, 30 RPM, 20 RPM for something like this.
even on wood, especially on metal. So the speeds just aren't available. Even the Bridgeport Mill is, uh, I believe, 80 was the lowest speed on that in back here. So we have to resort to using milling machines. At the high school, I had a lot of drill presses. I had a Delta. The ones that I did buy, even I'm, I'm surprised I knew enough when I was that young, but I paid a lot extra of school money to get the slow speed motor, which was 1140. But even the 1140 motor only uh, reduced the speed by, what, one third over the, the standard motors. So if you end up with a drill press that was made for woodworking and it has the 3450 motor on it, it's darn near worthless. That's why so many people are going with the variable frequency drives. All right, I uh, hope you like this series on my uh, latest acquisition here, the wonderful Delta Rockwell. Someone said that Delta was making another model fairly recently of variable speed, mechanical like this, but it was a total failure and it was troublesome and they took it off the market. And uh, I looked that up on the internet and uh, I had never seen that model before. And I think it ran about $1,000. So you, you've got to pay a lot of money to get the variable speed drive. I would like to have a crank on here rather than this ship's wheel. So I could, I could crank it. All right, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and I'll see you in the next video or on Vimeo.